Hey, thanks for joining us for this little video on the rosary. There's lots of different resources out there, lots of videos, articles, books on uh, what the rosary is all about, how it is that you pray it. Um, maybe you've had some of these different questions before and you've just maybe been too embarrassed to ask. Well, hopefully this video is just kind of a very condensed version to answer some of the top questions you might have and hopefully launch you into this practice of praying the rosary. So first of all, what does the word rosary mean? Well, it just comes from the Latin word rosarium, which means a crown of roses. So when you see a rosary, think of a crown of roses. That one was pretty simple. Okay, where'd the rosary come from? In a lot of different religions from across time, uh, there's been kind of this practice of praying with beads. So this isn't unique to Christianity, um, but the way in which it developed in Christianity, particularly this prayer of the rosary, probably the most famous prayer um, that uses beads, is that, uh, so in, the, in early Christianity, people would use rope with knots tied in them to pray certain prayers, whether it was uh, the prayers of the Psalms that you can find in the Bible, or whether it was uh, a prayer called the Jesus Prayer, which is just simply, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. People would pray that, you know, day in and day out using the knots on a rope. But eventually what happened was that in the year 1214, St. Dominic was visited by Our Lady. Mary appeared to him and gave him the rosary and taught him uh, a little bit about the rosary and how to pray it. And so ever since then, we've had the rosary as our prayer that we use with uh, the set of beads. And it spread around the world and it's kind of developed in the way in which it's been prayed over the centuries, but that's how we got the rosary as we know it today. Here's a question, why can't I just pray in my own words? Right, because the rosary is filled with a lot of prayers that are just kind of like memorized and recited. So why can't I just pray in my own words? Well, you can always pray in your own words, right? Prayer is ultimately about this relationship. And so there should be some spontaneity. There should be some times where you're praying to God and you're just sharing with him what's on your heart and you're able to listen to him as to what it is that he wants to say to you. But sometimes words can be hard to come by in prayer. We come to prayer and things just feel dry or we don't really know the words to say. This can be a prayer that can kind of launch us into uh, the conversation. It's almost like a conversation starter. Um, just praying this prayer can help give us the words when words are hard to come by. Another thing that's kind of cool about it is that it's a prayer that engages our mind, our soul, and our body, right? It's using kind of all three of these parts of who we are as human beings, my, body, mind, and soul, all engaged in this uh, beautiful prayer that can lead us into deeper relationship with God. Why am I praying to Mary? Why can't I just go straight to God? Well, you can always go straight to God, right? And that's what all prayer is ultimately rooted and grounded in, is our relationship with God. But God has given us this beautiful gift of the communion of saints to be with us on this journey of faith. The saints are men and women who are just like you and me, who had the different circumstances that we might be involved with, um, the different struggles that we might face on a daily basis. But these are people who, because of their faith, because uh, they loved the Lord and because they wanted to live out their Christian faith, they're shining examples for us of persevering in the faith. These are people who inspire us, who encourage us. And all the more so is uh, Mary. She's this great friend of ours, but more than just a friend, she's also our mother, right? Jesus gave us Mary to be our mother. And so she's queen of all the saints. She's mother of the church, mother of each and every one of us. And I don't know about you, but if I've ever had a prayer intention that I need a lot of prayers for, I might reach out to a lot of friends and say, hey, can you pray for this for me? Why not ask our friends who are in heaven, who are closer to God than any of us are here on earth right now? So Mary is uh, one of those saints that's in heaven right now, closer to God than we are because she's in heaven. Why not entrust these different petitions that are on our hearts to Mary, our mother who's in heaven. The other thing to keep in mind is that even when we pray that Hail Mary, we say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. So it's this movement of Mary praying for us because she's a mother, she's taking care of us, she's leading us to her son, Jesus, who is the Savior. She's leading us to God, whom our prayer is rooted in. So she's a friend along the way. Don't be afraid of calling upon her because she's always seeking to lead us to her son, Jesus. 
Why are there so many Hail Marys? I gotta admit, I'm human, you're human, we're all human, right? And so sometimes when we're praying the Hail Mary, it can feel a little boring. We might even doze off, you know, it's, it's fine. It's, it's what happens. Um, but there are a lot of things in life that we do that are a little bit repetitive, like in our conversations with people, if our relationships, um, in our relationships, we might say the same thing over and over again, like, I love you, I'm sorry, thank you, how are you? You know, we ask all these questions, and just because we ask them frequently doesn't mean that they're not important. Now, again, I'm not gonna say 50 times, how are you, how are you, how are you? That would be annoying, right? But this prayer, in praying it over and over and over again, it might not always seem like the most fun. It might feel boring at times, but you can maybe think of it as kind of like this cadence. It's kind of like this uh, rhythm that immerses us into this movement of prayer. We're saying it over and over again, and it's helping us to enter into uh, these different scenes that we were talking about, um, about the life of Jesus. So there are a lot of Hail Marys, but that's all right. As I once heard uh, this quote, the monotony of Hail Marys is like the monotony of your sins. So it's all good. How is it that we pray the rosary? Well, there's a few different ways uh, to pray it, and I'm gonna teach you just the way that I pray it. It's one of the more um, kind of traditional ways. So you're gonna begin by calling to mind the different petitions that you have on your heart, um, the different things that you would like to pray for. And then you begin by holding the crucifix and making the sign of the cross. You're going to start off with uh, the Apostles' Creed as you're holding the crucifix. Just a good way to kind of immerse our minds into what it is that we're entering into. Um, just recalling all the different things that we believe as Christians as we're entering into this prayer, which Christians have been praying for uh, several centuries now. And then we pray on that first bead, the Our Father. The Our Father is uh, the prayer that Jesus gave us in the Gospels, so it's, it's a beautiful prayer. It's the perfect prayer that God himself gave us. And then you have three Hail Marys on these three beads right after that, and what those are for are to pray for an increase in the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. So each of these Hail Marys is like saying, Mary, Jesus, help me to be more faith-filled. Jesus, Mary, help me to be more hopeful. Jesus, Mary, help me to be more charitable. Finally, on this last little bead here, we're gonna pray a glory be prayer, and then a prayer called the Fatima prayer. Then what's gonna happen is that you've got your rosary, you've got five decades here. You've got five sets of 10, right? Decade means 10. And what this is, is that uh, each time you pray the rosary, you can meditate on a certain set of mysteries. And each of the set of mysteries has five particular mysteries that you can meditate on. So for instance, if we were to pray the joyful mysteries, the first joyful mystery is the Annunciation, where Jesus is conceived in the womb of Mary. So what would happen is that for these 10 Hail Marys, you start out with Our Father, then you pray the 10 Hail Marys, and you pray a Glory Be and a Fatima prayer at the very end. And while you're on this mystery, for instance, of the Annunciation, as you're praying these Hail Marys, you're just kind of visualizing, maybe, if it helps you, the Annunciation story. That's the mystery that you're meditating on as you're saying the prayers of this decade. Then when you move on to the next decade, the next 10 beats, you start off again with an Our Father, and then the 10 Hail Marys where you're focusing on the second joyful mystery, which would be the Visitation. Finally, it ends with a Glory Be and a Fatima prayer. When you get all the way done with those five mysteries, you get to the very end, you pray your Glory Be, you pray your Fatima prayer, then there is a prayer called the Hail Holy Queen, there is a prayer to uh, St. Michael the Archangel, and then there's usually one other prayer that's prayed in the rosary, and then finally we make the sign of the cross, and that's the rosary, that's how we pray, that's why it is that we pray, so hopefully this launches you into praying this uh, with more devotion, uh, so that you can grow in your relationship with Jesus and Mary. God bless you.